Hello, my name is Andre Boyson. And today, I want to talk to you about how to build verifiable credentials into your service. Verified credentials are part of this new concept around a decentralized identity, which makes it easier for consumers to show up and register for your service in a way that's easy for them and also more trustworthy for you. So the challenge is today, there's, there's a lot of choices out there. And what I want to do today is just show you how you can take away some of the risk around assessing these choices and get through the innovation to get these verifiable credentials into your service sooner. I'm very pleased to be presenting this today with a, a, a blockchain engineer here at Security, and his name is Uchi Uchibeki. Uchi is well known in the hackathon community for the work he's doing around verified credentials and innovation for many services, particularly in Africa. And he's also the founder of Africa Hacks. I'm going to talk about a new interoperability layer called TrustBlock that SecureKey has created to make bringing verified credentials into your service so much easier. So as you think about your service, today you typically will have user IDs and passwords as a way for delivering services online. But when it comes to registration, it's a little bit different. We find for many of the harder services like you know, healthcare and education and selling a car on the internet or getting a new bank account, we don't do registration on the internet. We force people to come to the counter and maybe we give them a user ID and password. Now we're finding in times of COVID that bringing everybody to the counter is not always the best choice. And so we're seeing a lot of innovation while maybe some services can do it themselves. So you have a do-it-yourself approach maybe you do a selfie and a driver's license pic, uh, picture along with a retina scan and, you know, that's feasible, I guess, at some level, but it's not really going to scale because uh, you know the, the burden you're putting on the user is actually quite high, and you still have all the assessment challenges of looking at all the information you gather that way. Another possible choice is the internet giants. You can use Facebook and Google and so on. But when it comes to high assurance services, that's not really going to work either. One, there's the privacy concerns around how much data is being shared and the, how much data the internet giant is going to get out of the transaction. But two, there's an integrity challenge too, because the challenge is that the internet giants haven't met any of their customers in person. So you can't really rely on the underlying identity if you're gonna do a registration. So that brings us to an exciting area of innovation on the internet called decentralized identity. And this is the idea that consumers can bring trusted information and credentials from the issuers they already have in their life, like banks, telcos, governments, and so on. And so that's where we're gonna spend most of our time today. Now, one of the things I've observed when relying parties or services think about verified credentials, they think they've got to make the right choice. They've got to pick the right verified credential so that they can do their innovation now. You know, I understand the thinking, but I want to change the thinking a little bit if I can. And comparing identity to payments, when you think about payments, every merchant on the planet has made their own decisions about what payments instruments they're going to, to accept. Some only accept cash. Others will take checks. Others take uh, Visa, MasterCard, and Interact, and others will take Bitcoin too. So every merchant's making its own choices, and they make those choices based on how they can best deliver services to the customers they want to reach. And I want to encourage you to think about identity onboarding in that way as well. There's going to be more than one network and more than one way for users to reach you. You've got to choose the ones that make most sense for your service, but I want to encourage you to think that you're going to have more than one so you can have more choice and more user inclusion as you do your onboarding and registration for your service. So that brings us to the topic of trust block. And a very simple way to think about trust block is it's your decentralized identity gateway. It's a way for you to quickly onboard verified credentials to your service. Now this is based on standards and it comes out of a, some work we've been doing with the Canadian and US governments around making it easier for government to do onboarding of verifiable credentials. So it's all based on standards around OpenID Connect and many of the uh, decentralized identity standards like DIDs and uh, verified credentials from W3C are all woven into this platform. We're also doing work with uh, FDX, which is a, a financial inclusion and open banking concept that's taking root in, in Canada and the US. And we're also adding more capabilities to the Trust Block network so that you'll be able to uh, take advantage of some of the new and emerging methods for verifying credentials as they, they grow over time. So some of the trust block benefits from a relying party point of view is the biggest challenge is the fear of moving early is, is mitigated. Um, if you think you should be choosing met, uh, network number one as the choice and you do all of your work there only to find network number two is the one that gets the most market traction, you're, you may have to change. And so the good part about using trust block is it insulates you from these decisions because it allows you to onboard multiple networks. 
And the idea, the way to think about it is it's any issuer, any wallet, any verifier, which is to say the, the, the issuer authority that the, that is giving the credentials to the user can choose their technology stack, the user can choose their favorite wallet, and now you too can choose your favorite technology stack because TrustBlock will allow you to integrate all of them. And so what it does is it gives you a simple way to implement your network interface so you can take, um, verify your credentials from multiple issuers. Uh, this is an open source model that's uh, hosted on GitHub and it's royalty free and patent free. So it's an open source community effort we've created because we believe that true interop is gonna be vital to making identity work. So you can download it and use it at no cost, but we do want to create a community. So we're looking for your contributions and innovations to add back to this network layer so that we can get better identity for everyone. But you should also be thinking that, you know, with more choice comes more inclusion, which means you're going to serve more of your user population better. And that's ultimately going to give them a better experience with your service, but also make your service more efficient. So once again, it's your decentralized identity gateway. A very simple way now to think about this from a relying party point of view is in purple, you have your service and you have your existing user ID and password stack. So that's existing and in place. But you want to you know, experiment and innovate and see if you can bring in some verified credentials. So in red, you're going to introduce the trust block layer that's going to allow you to onboard and integrate multiple verified credential technologies into your service. And so Verified Me is one example that's got traction here in the Canadian market. Sovereign and Uport and Showcard are also verified credential services that are in the market. And so by using TrustBlock, you can integrate one or many now. And then as new services come available in the future, you'll be able to integrate those too. So I'm, now I'm gonna give it over to Uchi to talk about how as a relying party you could do this. Now this is a technical pre presentation of how TrustBlock works. And Verified Me is not shown as part of the demo. It's actually pretty technical and those there's no actual uh, third party credentials that are being used. It's a demonstration of TrustBlock itself. And the, the, the scenario we've chosen is adding verified credentials to a fictional fintech lending platform so you can see how this might work for your service. So with all of that, I would like to give it over to Uchi now. Uchi, over to you. Thanks, Andre, for that. So I'm going to be showing you how to build a Reliant Party. But imagine, imagine that you're a lending platform and you currently offer home loans to your customers or to your clients. The process that you might have to go through now is you have a website and your clients apply for loans on your website. They fill out forms and after they fill out the form, you request for their credit report, you request for their pay stubs and other information. And then your staff need to verify that those documents are actually valid. This process takes a long time and it's also prone to error. And for the customer, it's also not the best experience because you have to wait for multiple days to get their loan approved. We believe that this, change, this should change and that's why we built TrustBlock. TrustBlock is an open platform that allows anyone to issue and use verifiable credentials. So as a relying party, as a lender looking to offer loans to customers, you can use or request that the users use verifiable credentials to apply for loans. And this gives the users additional options. So for those that already have these verifiable credentials stored on wallets on their browser, all they need to do is to click a couple of buttons. Those credentials are sent to you. And then you, are, you verify those credentials that they're actually genuine. So let's see how all of this actually works. I'm gonna switch my screen here to the browser. Notice that on this page, we have a lending platform called FastLoans. FastLoans, on this FastLoans site, all the user needs to do is click on apply for a home loan. When they do that, notice what happens. So when they click on this, they get a pop-up, they don't get a form, right? They, they get a pop-up, they click next, and notice that they have a couple of wallets that they can pick from. So these wallets are from multiple, multiple providers. And this is the beauty of using standards and also using verifiable credentials. So the user is not tied to a particular wallet provider. And for you as a relying party or as someone looking to use verifiable credentials, you can accept any wallet because you're using standards like TrustBlock and also like TrustBlock 
right so the user clicks on uh, one of the wallets and notice that their information is going to be pulled using the credential handler api and then they can decide to share this but before we do that let's actually jump back to the code and see how all of this works so i'm going to switch my screen here and you can see the code so when we when we switch to the code we would see a couple of steps and then we'll see how we can implement a relying party so for a lending platform the first step of course is to determine what information you want to request from the client so this could be based on regulations and some other uh, standard that you've set for yourself and your company in this case we're going to request that the user be a permanent resident of Canada so we're gonna request for their permanent resident card we're gonna request for their personal information like names and all of those other information all right so once we've determined that we write a query that corresponds with the chappy standard the credential handler API standards and then we pass it on to the credential handler API to pull that information from the user's wallet so let's see how that query looks like so if I scroll up there are a couple of options here, but we're going to stick with the PR card. Notice that the type of credential we're requesting is the permanent resident card credential. So this is already uh, something that has been issued by an issuer in this ecosystem. All right, so the permanent resident card is already there, and that's what we want to request from the user. So if we go back to the code, we notice that we request for the PR card right and then we also pass the domain that's the website domain and we also pass a challenge the challenge is a uuid that you generate and once you do that uh, we then call this credential handler api so as most of us know the credential handler api is a standard javascript api that allows us to interact with credentials on a user's browser so when we send a query to the credential handler api that's when we get the pop-up that i showed before but once we do that and we get the data we need to verify that we actually got some data and also that the type is also part of the uh, data that we got so let's switch back and go back to the demo that we had before so i'm just going to refresh this page and i'll click on that again i'll click next i'll click on the wallet and like before, we're gonna see uh, some data. So in this case, the permanent resident card. When I click next, uh, I'm just trying to open my terminal there. So when I click next, on the terminal, I'll notice that we get some information. I'm just gonna put on my glasses. So we get some information. And if, it, if I click on the uh, verifiable credential, and then the type, Notice that the type there is permanent resident card, and that's what we want. That's what we want to get, right? So let's go back to the code. Let's just switch back to the code and see what the next step is. Because once we've gotten the verifiable credential, what can we do with it, right? That's not the end. We, need, we also need to do some work with our credentials that we've gotten. So I'm just going to copy some code here and put it here. So once we have the credential, what we want to do is first verify it in the front end so we want to verify that the type of that credential is actually the type that we requested for so that in this case we requested for permanent resident card we will do result of the other type because permanent resident card just to do that verification and then the next step that we want to do is to uh, verify that that credential is coming from a trusted issuer that that credential is actually from an issuer and all of those information so we pass the value we pass the data we pass the domain we pass the challenge and then we submit it to an api that we implemented and the api then causes the verify function i'm not really going to go into the details of this function but this function what it does is that it verifies that a credential comes from a trusted issuer so once we've done that it's going to return back to the front end and tell us that yeah we have the right credential and then as a lender we can use that information to make decisions about uh, what we want to offer the user what rate and things like that well let's switch back and see the entire process so i'm going to go back to the browser i'll click on apply and uh, when i click on apply 
just give me a moment so apply next select the wallet that we want to use I'll just give it some time select the credential share and once we do this the verification is happening now so we're verifying those credentials and once we're done we're going to that then say yeah it's successful you've applied successfully because we've used the information that came from the user's wallet and we've been able to verify that it comes from a trusted source and then we send them a confirmation saying that yeah you've presented your id uh, we're going to get back to you later or we offer them a loan in real time so what this does for you as a lender is that it cuts down the the back office processes that you used to go through before right so you don't have to go through all of those long processes of uh, verifying those credentials or even have the staff that need to verify those credentials it saves time it saves uh, resources and for the user it provides the best user experience for your clients so this is the power of using verifiable credentials and this has shown us how we can uh, build a platform that allows us to to share verifiable credentials so we've, we've been able to demonstrate that a relying party can integrate with verifiable credentials and also offer users additional choices so like before you could also have the form that you had before but this is going to be an additional choice that you're offering to users to apply for service therefore improving the experience for user so all of this code is freely available on github please check it out and let us know if you have any questions we're always happy to help with integration tasks and helping you get started with verifiable credentials have a good day